today we're going to cover the measurement and replacement of the piston and the cylinder and things to look for as far as wear and uh, setting ring and gap, all of those good items. Okay, the tools that you'll need, which a lot of you may not have, but you really need these to measure the piston and cylinder clearance correctly, is the micrometer. It doesn't have to be fancy, it can be the old type also, but the new, newer electronic digital ones are easier to read. Um, and a dial bore gauge, which is really the best and most accurate way to measure the cylinder bore. And you'll need some fueler gauges to measure and adjust the ring end gap. Okay, we've already removed the old piston and cylinder from the engine. Um, you want to give it a visual inspection. Um, take a look at how the piston looks as far as wear. You can see this one, the skirts are polished quite a bit. That doesn't mean it's worn out. We'll measure it and make sure, but um, most of these four strokes, if they're ridden really hard, you probably don't want to run a piston much more than 20 hours. Um, a lot of you that ride easier um, can run them quite a bit longer. Um, pro level rider would change it out every weekend, so that'd be every two hours of racing. Um, most people don't realize they wear out that quick, but these pistons are highly stressed. They're really short skirts. If they get too much clearance, they start rocking in the cylinder bore, and then all kinds of bad things can happen. The cylinder wears out quicker. The rings don't seal, and in extreme situations, the piston turns sideways, and then you have a real expensive repair bill. Okay, now you can see on this cylinder, those of you that are real observant will notice this is a different brand of cylinder than the engine we're working on. Um, just so happens this one's a better example of what to look for in a cylinder. Um, you do need to measure it for roundness and taper, but this cylinder has a lot of scratches in it. And if you want your engine to be perfect, you need to replace this cylinder. The, uh, if you can feel the scratches with your fingernail, if you push hard, they're deep enough to cause oil consumption. And oil consumption means less room in your combustion chamber for fuel and air. Um, just performance overall is, is hurt quite a bit by any kind of oil consumption and loss of compression. Um, there are ways such as leak down tests to tell how bad the, the cylinder is before you disassemble the engine, um, that be covered in another video. Um, this cylinder, even though to some of you it probably doesn't look that bad, like I said, it is. it should be replaced to make the engine perfect if you're going through the effort to rebuild it at this point. Um, this type of scoring isn't that unusual in a four-stroke. These engines put out a lot of horsepower and they're highly stressed. Um, these scratches were caused by dirty oil or poor quality oil. So this is one of the biggest reasons to run good oil in your engine and keep it clean. Um, this, this type of thing will happen quite frequently if you don't change it often enough or if you run an oil that can't withstand the heat that these engines put out. because Horsepower is made by heat, and the higher horsepower you make, the more heat you produce. So that's why you don't find any serious race team running a low-quality cheap oil. You know, the oil is, is cheap insurance. The next thing we need to do is measure your piston diameter and your cylinder bore diameter. This is um, especially important if you're using your old piston and or your old cylinder. You want to make sure that you have the correct clearance and you don't have any excessive wear on anything. Um, you can't just throw in a new piston into your old cylinder and assume it's correct. The cylinder is worn as soon as you run it and whatever clearance it was new it doesn't apply anymore. So to measure the piston diameter you'll need your micrometer. Um, 
check in your piston box, there'll be a set of instructions. Um, if, if you're remeasuring your used piston, you'll have to find the instructions whether you go online to the piston manufacturer um, or consult your owner's manual if you still have the OE piston in it. Um, it will tell you where to measure the diameter. There's usually a specified distance down the skirt from the bottom or up the skirt from the bottom. Um, so you want to follow those instructions. And then they'll also, the instructions will also give you the correct piston to cylinder clearance too. So to measure it, you just just check it out, put it in there. You'll want to practice a little bit so you're good at doing this because technique does have a certain amount in getting this right. And then we lock the lock on the mic so that it's locked at whatever your piston size was. Okay, now we have our micrometer already set to the piston diameter. So the next thing we need to do is, is with our dial bore gauge, we need to zero it to the piston size. That way we'll get a direct reading in the cylinder of what the actual clearance is to this to this piston. Now if you have a cylinder works kit, piston and cylinder kit, they've already been matched. So you've lucked out, you don't need all these tools. You can assemble it and it'll be correct. Okay, now after we've measured the piston diameter, we want to zero the bore gauge to the piston diameter. So we're going to use the, the micrometer as our zeroing setup for the bore gauge. I'm not going to get real detailed on this. Um, again, it takes some skill. You'll want to practice it, but we're just going to make sure that the bore gauge reads zero. And it might not be the way you're looking at it. But the bore gauge is going to read zero when it's at piston size. So then you'll get a plus or minus above, above or below your piston size when you put it in the cylinder. Okay, now measuring the cylinder, you want to measure front to back across the thrust face. You'll get a measurement. You want to do it in a couple different places, up and down. Here's the middle. Here's the bottom. And then you also want to check it side to side for roundness. And again, on a new cylinder, you probably don't have to worry about this. Probably not necessary, especially if it's one of the Cylinder Works kits. You'll measure it in a couple places and see what kind of variation it has. On a used cylinder, first of all, your piston clearance needs to match whatever the man piston manufacturer specifies. And again, if it's a new piston, you're going by the directions that came with the piston. If you have a used piston, you're either, if it's OE, you're looking in your owner's manual for those specs, or you're going to have to go online if you don't have instructions from your piston when you bought it new previously. I like to see the, the roundness and taper within one and a half thousandths. Um, that's about 0 .004 millimeters. And it can vary a little bit more than that. It's better if it's less, but around one and a half thousandths is, is ideal or, or under. Okay, another thing to note on pistons that we get questions on from time to time, the piston has what's called a cam grind on it. Um, the, the piston is smaller at the top, smaller diameter, and it's also oval shaped at the top. Um, the reason it's, it's that way is because there's more material in the top than on the very thin skirts on the bottom. And the expansion rate is going to be greater where there's more material. So, piston manufacturer does a lot of testing 
to get the shape right so that the piston at operating temperature is round and straight. So if you measure the piston at the top, front to back, it's going to be quite a bit smaller sometimes than at the bottom of the skirts, front to back. Um, it, it can be a pretty big variance, a half a millimeter. So you want to make sure you always measure the diameter of the piston in the correct spot. Um, also side across the sides, left to right, it's the same way. It's smaller left to right than it is front to back. Again, that's because there's more material on the sides than there are front to back. And the manufacturer is trying to make it a round piston when it's hot.